All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. His kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long as I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. O, o Savior, Savior of the world, who by thy cross and precious blood hast redeemed us, save us and help us, we humbly beseech thee, O Lord. The psalms appointed this morning are Psalm 16, Psalm 27, and Psalm 30. Preserve me, O God, for in thee have I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my God, I have no good like unto thee. All my delight is upon the saints that are in the earth, and upon such as excel in virtue. But they that run after another God shall have great trouble. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, neither make mention of their names within my lips. The Lord himself is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou shalt maintain thy lot. The law has fallen unto me in a fair ground. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will thank the Lord for giving me warning. My reins also chasten me in the night season. I have set the Lord alway before me, for he is on my right hand, therefore I shall not fall. Wherefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. 
For why, thou shalt not leave my soul in hell, neither shalt thou suffer thy Holy One to see corruption. Thou shalt show me the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of joy, and at thy right hand there is pleasure for evermore. O Savior, Savior of the world, who by, by thy cross and precious blood hast redeemed us, save us and help us, we humbly beseech thee, O Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host of men were laid against me, yet shall not my heart be afraid. And though there rose up war against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I desired of the Lord, which I will require, even that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to visit his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his tabernacle. Yea, in the secret place of his dwelling shall he hide me, and set me up upon a rock of stone. And now shall he lift up mine head, above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness. I will sing and speak praises unto the Lord. Hearken unto my voice, O Lord, when I cry to thee. Have mercy upon me, and hear me. My heart hath talked of thee. Seek ye my face. Thy face, Lord, will I seek. O hide not thou thy face from me, nor cast thy servant away in displeasure. Thou hast been my succor. Leave, leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord taketh me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in the right way because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over into the will of mine adversaries, for there are false witnesses risen up against me, and such as speak wrong. I should utterly have fainted, but that I believe verily to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. O oh, tarry thou the Lord's leisure, be strong, and he shall comfort thine heart, and put thou thy trust in the Lord. O oh, Saviour of the world, who by thy cross and precious blood hast redeemed us, save us and help us, we humbly beseech thee, O Lord. I will magnify thee, O Lord, for thou hast set me up, and not made my foes to triumph over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Thou, Lord, hast brought my soul out of hell. Thou hast kept my life, that I should not go down into the pit. Sing praises unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks unto him for a remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endureth but the twinkling of an eye, and in his pleasure is life. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity I said, I shall never be removed. Thou, Lord, of thy goodness, hadst made my hill so strong. Thou didst turn thy face from me, and I was troubled. Then cried I unto thee, O Lord, and gat me to my Lord right humbly. What profit is there in my blood when I go down into the pit? Shall the dust give thanks unto thee, or shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned my heaviness into joy. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Therefore shall every good man sing of thy praise without ceasing. O my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. O Savior of the world, who by thy cross and precious blood hast redeemed us, save us and help us, we humbly beseech thee, O Lord. Here beginneth the 14th chapter of the book of Job. Job laments man's mortal frailty, the finitude and ephemeral character of human life, and uh, which is brought under the judgment of God. And then he moves on to consider the possibilities of uh, uh, future life um, and uh, determines they are not to be found in nature, but only beyond judgment and beyond death. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. And doth thou open thine eyes upon such an one? 
and bringest me into judgment with thee? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee, thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass, turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as an hireling his day. For there is hope of a tree if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stalk thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud, and bring forth boughs like a plant. But man dieth and wasteth away, yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? As the waters fail from the sea, and the flood decayeth and drieth up, so man lieth down and riseth not. Till the heavens be no more, they shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. O, oh, that thou wouldst hide me in the grave, that thou wouldst keep me secret until thy wrath be past, that thou wouldst appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Here endeth the first lesson. O oh, all ye works of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, ye angels of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, ye heavens, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, ye waters that be above the firmament, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye powers of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye sun and moon, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye stars of heaven, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye showers and dew, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye winds of God, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye fire and heat, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye winter and summer, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye dews and frosts, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye frost and cold, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye ice and snow, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye nights and days, bless ye the Lord, Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye light and darkness, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye lightnings and clouds, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O let the earth bless the Lord. Yea, let it praise him and magnify him forever. O ye mountains and hills, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye green things upon the earth, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye wells, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye seas and floods, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye whales and all that move in the waters, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye fowls of the air, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye beasts and cattle, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye children of men, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O let Israel bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye priests of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye servants of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye spirits and souls of the righteous, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye holy and humble men of heart, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. Here beginneth the 50th verse of the 23rd chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, the burial of Jesus. At that time, behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man and a just. The same had not consented to the counsel and deed of them, he was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, 
who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus, and he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never man before was laid. And that day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. And the women also, which came with him from Galilee, followed after, and beheld the sepulcher, and how his body was laid, and they returned, and prepared spices and ointments, and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Here endeth the second lesson. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. O Savior of the world, who, who by thy, thy cross and precious blood hast redeemed us, save us and help us, we humbly beseech thee, O Lord. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endure thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. For it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, may clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty and everlasting God, who of thy tender love towards mankind hast sent thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh, and to suffer death upon the cross, that all mankind should follow the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may both follow the example of his patience and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace, and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, 
through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who have safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by thy governance may be righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that as we are baptized into the death of thy blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, so by continually mortifying our corrupt affections, we may be buried with him, and that through the grave and gate of death, we may pass to our joyful resurrection. For his merits who died and was buried and rose again for us, the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. The epistle is written in the third chapter of the first epistle general of St. Peter, beginning at the 17th verse. Beloved, it is better if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few that is, eight souls, were saved by water. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the 27th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 57th verse. At that time, when the even was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulchre and departed. 
And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulchre. Now the next day that followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said while he was yet alive, After three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as ye can. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting the watch. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Though today is called Easter Eve, that's its proper name in the Anglican tradition, it's not the beginning of the Feast of Easter, it's the last day of the Lenten fast. A last day for that godly sorrow that worketh repentance, not to be regretted. And this day is often treated as a kind of mere interval between the Good Friday and Uh, Easter, but it has its own distinctive character in the Anglican tradition, one that is centered on the teaching of Scripture and the article of our creed that the Lord, after his death, was buried and that he descended into hell. So first, let's consider his burial, and then we'll consider his descent into hell. Crucified men were outcasts, and so were their bodies normally treated like carrion uh, or thrown into a common pit. So it was an unusual privilege, a grace, indeed, that was obtained from Pilate uh, by high-status sympathizers of Jesus that the body of Jesus might be taken down and granted honorable burial. And so before dusk on Friday, he is hastily interred in a nearby tomb that happened to be newly carved out of the limestone of Jerusalem's hills. His body is taken down, wrapped in clean linen, laid to rest in a tomb undefiled by any prior burial. And there's even, by a wonderful providence, a guard of soldiers to protect his body from theft or violation, a guard of honor, one might say, for the Son of God, on his great Sabbath rest. For it's not insignificant that he rests, his body rests in the tomb on the Sabbath when the rest from work is mandated for Israel because of God's own rest from his own labors. It's a sign that the work of Christ is finished, his labors done his mission accomplished. So far in Lent, we've been journeying toward the cross, and yesterday we reached it. And so today the cross is behind us. It is an accomplished fact, a finished work of atonement, a full redemption, a full reconciliation to the Father. As St. Peter testifies in today's epistle lesson, Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to flesh, death in the flesh, but quickened, made alive by the Spirit. The strife is o'er, the battle done. Christ also hath once suffered for sins, and now he rests from his labors in the great Sabbath rest of the Son of God. Now, his rest is a sign that his work is done. It's also a sign for us to rest from our own labors, our labors to justify ourselves before God by our works, our labors to find approval and acceptance of God despite our sins. It is a sign for us to rest in his work for us. And so the rest and peace of the Son of God signifies the rest and peace of a conscience, that has been cleansed and purified from the defilement of sin, is now quiet and at peace with God. 
And so our prayer intention for today is that we might indeed rest by faith in him, resting from all anxiety, guilt, and fear, from all futile efforts at self-justification, secure in the finished work of atonement, assured and confident of God's goodwill towards us now and ever. Well, that's his burial in the tomb. Not just a fact of history, but a fact of immense theological and spiritual significance and comfort. Now, the more difficult one, his descent into hell. This clause entered the creed rather late in its development, although it is certainly ancient. It was, historically speaking, it was a way of acknowledging and emphasizing that Jesus truly died. He didn't just pretend to die or appear to die. He experienced human death to the fullest. And as his body lay in the tomb, so his soul was separated from his body and was in the condition of the departed, in the, in the state of death. But scripture occasionally hints at something more than just this, true though it is. And one of those hints is in St. Peter's epistle today, which tells us that by the Spirit, Christ went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was there preparing. And then goes on to speak of the fullness of Christ's triumph, that he is uh, angels and authorities and powers are made subject unto him. So that hint, mystifying as it may seem, in the church's history has indeed uh, suggested uh, that Christ's soul descended into the realm of the dead and harrowed hell. That's what is called the harrowing of hell. And in iconography, you can see, we have one uh, icon in the, in the church, you can see uh, uh, the gates of hell are lying flat on the ground, Satan squashed like a bug beneath them, his minions fleeing in terror before the gate trampling Christ, who victoriously leads into light those whom the prophet Zechariah calls the prisoners of hope, those who died before his coming, but died in the hope of the redemption yet to come. A great procession that in art is usually begins with Adam and Eve, includes various saints of the Old Testament like Moses and David, and concludes with John the Baptist and the penitent thief who had died just shortly before to whom Jesus had made the promise, today shalt thou be with me in paradise, and now keeps that promise by the harrowing of hell. Well, the harrowing of hell is no doubt a wonderful image. It's poetry rather than salvation history. But in a poetic way, it vividly expresses an undoubted truth of the gospel. And for that, I'm going to turn to a 16th century semi-official catechism by Alexander Noel, Dean of St. Paul's, most famous for the fact that Queen Elizabeth I interrupted his sermon on one occasion when he was trying to give her advice about public policy with the words, to your text, Mr. Dean, to your text. In Noel's catechism, the question is, Noel may have been erroneous on public policy, but he was very sound on theology. What meaneth his descending into hell? And the answer is that, as Christ in his body descended into the bowels of the earth, so in his soul, severed from his body, he descended into hell. And that therewith also, the virtue of his death, so pierced through to the dead, and the very hell itself, that both the souls of the unbelieving felt their most painful and just damnation for infidelity. And Satan himself, the prince of hell, felt that all the power of his tyranny and darkness was weakened, vanquished, and fallen to ruin. And on the other side, the dead, who while they believed, believed in Christ, understood that the work of their redemption was now finished, 
and perceived the effect and strength thereof with most sweet and assured comfort. In his descent into hell, Christ descends in the full virtue and power of the victory he'd won upon the cross, the hidden victory, which is already hiddenly at work on this great Sabbath of the Son of God and will be manifested in his rising from the dead on the third day. The special character of this day is one that brings together both the cross and resurrection as one complete work, accomplished and then revealed. And uh, it is a day in which we may as well reflect on the great comfort, the encouragement, the security that we have in life and in death. Our only comfort in life and death is that I, with body and soul, both in life and death, am not my own, but belong fully unto my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ, who, with his precious blood, has fully satisfied for all my sins and delivered me from all the power of the devil and so preserves me that without the will of my heavenly Father, not a hair can fall from my head. Yea, that all things must be subservient to my salvation, and therefore, by his Holy Spirit, he also assures me of eternal life and makes me sincerely willing and ready henceforth to live unto him. May this comfort of the gospel be ours also, who in baptism and faith have died and been buried and are called to rise again with him. Amen. To do good and to distribute, forget not, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. In our prayers today, remembering the death and burial and descent into hell of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us indeed grasp hold of the grace offered to us in baptism, received by faith, to die with Christ die to all sin, to be buried with him, and that we may rise with him in new life of righteousness. Of your charity, I bid your prayers for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, especially for the repose of the soul of Clifford Dixon, sometime sexton of this parish, who died this past week, upon whose soul and the souls of all the faithful, may Almighty God have mercy. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, 
they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Christ, for our sakes, became obedient unto death, even, even the, the death, death of, of the cross. cross. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all those who are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth, one God, world without end. Amen.